Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross. Alleluia. Suffer to redeem our loss. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, and happy Easter. Still, we continue to celebrate the joy of Easter Day. Every day is Easter for eight days during this octave, and so we gather again this way at the altar to enjoy and to experience once again the presence of the risen Lord Jesus. And today, precisely, we hear that gospel reading about the how about the way Jesus appeared to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and they recognized him only at the moment of the breaking of the bread, and then he disappeared. It's a beautiful story of Jesus' appearance to those two disciples on the first day of the resurrection. Let us begin this Mass by asking God to forgive us for the times we have not recognized him in the sacraments and also in our neighbor, those around us or sheltering uh, with us, who uh, uh, perhaps we don't recognize God's presence and that we, uh, Christ is within them. Uh, let's ask God's mercy and forgiveness so that we can worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, you are sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year, with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever,
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man, crippled from birth, was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate. Every day, to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. <clears throat> when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into, into the temple with them, <clears throat> walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. <clears throat> he remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near 
and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, called Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astonished us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village, <clears throat> the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What had taken place on the way, those words, the way, were the first name for the Catholic Church, for our Catholic Christian religion, the first name or 
denomination for the sect of the Jews. At first they were just called the Messianic Jews or um, Christian or, or followers of the New Way, they were called. Uh, the New Way. And so when uh, it speaks of meeting them on the way, it's speaking of the church and uh, the fact that um, the Lord walks with us in the church, in the Catholic Church. For 2,000 years, he's been walking with us and, and uh, explaining the scriptures, opening, breaking open the word for us, and, uh, and breaking the bread, giving himself. And we recognize him in the sacraments. We recognize our Catholic Church in the, in the Bible. Of course, we believe it's a Catholic book that the Lord inspired it. And, and it's very clear, actually, that uh, what you've got in this reading is uh, the two parts of the Mass, right? You've got, uh, I recognize it, I don't know if you recognize it as well, that uh, first they're walking along, actually it was would have been several hours at least, to go from Jerusalem to this town of Emmaus, walking, and so Jesus spent hours and hours with them, the risen Lord, appearing and spending quality time with them. Um, perhaps he was, of course, able in his resurrected body to appear to other people at the same time. But here Jesus is walking with these two disciples and, and explaining the scriptures to them. And, <clears throat> and so first you've got the liturgy of the word. He's speaking, breaking open the word of God with them. And then they go into their house when they arrive and he sits at table with them and he breaks the bread and they recognize him. So you've got the liturgy of the word, the first half of the mass. On Sundays, we have the first half of the mass. And then the second half of the mass, of course, we know is the, is the bread and the wine and the Eucharist, the breaking of the bread. So you've got those two parts. You often find in the Old Testament also um, kind of a uh, indication of this, that you've got um, uh, usually uh, a sacrifice. Usually, usually they actually first read from the law and then they rejoice and they declare that they're going to follow these laws now and they make a covenant with the Lord and then they all sit down to a sacrificial meal and rejoice. So again, uh, a number of times in the Bible you've got that, that, that those two parts, which eventually, of course, um, were um, the two parts of our Holy Mass. In the first reading also from the Acts of the Apostles, you've got this, this um, story of the um, healing of this crippled man at the temple gate by Peter and John. And here again, I recognize uh, our Catholic faith because here you've got uh, them going up to the temple. It says, for the three o'clock hour of prayer. Well, what was that? Well, the Jews in the temple would pray at certain hours. And what would they pray? Of course, the Psalms. They would chant the Psalms. And so there, there you have, I recognize my breviary, my Catholic office book, the office, the Liturgy of the Hours. Uh, to even today, 2,000 years later, we're still doing it, what they've been doing for thousands of years, this uh, tradition of of praying the Psalms at certain hours of the day. And we have terse, or, and known, uh, and sext, the three um, daytime prayer hours. And so known would be the ninth hour. Um, monks get together and pray, and they, I'm wearing my monkish uh, um, alb again to show this, uh, this um, uh, monastic aspect of our faith, but the monks um, and also lay people as well and priests pray these certain hours of the day. But of course, this uh, beautiful gospel reading is, is um, um, very special. Every day we're hearing a different apparition of our Lord. And yesterday we heard a wonderful story of the apparition of Jesus in the Gospel of John to Mary Magdalene. And uh, unfortunately, my alarm didn't uh, wake me up yesterday, and so uh, I didn't get to live stream that Mass. However, uh, it was a very beautiful 
reading, uh, Mary Magdalene weeping at the tomb and Jesus appearing to her, and she also didn't recognize him in his risen uh, body. He was able to appear in such a way that he was not recognized. She thought he was the gardener. And, um, uh, but I've always been puzzled by that um, fact that, um, that uh, uh, after he says her name and she recognizes him, then she reaches to embrace him. Uh, but then he says, do not embrace me. Do not hold on to me, he says. I have not yet ascended to my father. And this is a very strange, I've never quite been satisfied with the explanations I've heard and homilies about this, um, uh, but, but uh, this year I've really kind of realized that the interpretive key, a key to understanding it, is this other gospel here that we have. Uh, this gospel now, from a different gospel writer, from the Gospel of Luke, we have something very similar. Uh, once again, Jesus appears, Suddenly, and they suddenly recognize him, and then what happens? He disappears. Why does Jesus disappear? Why did he disappear? Why didn't he finish the meal, have dessert, continue talking about the scriptures? He disappeared. Why? He's not here anymore for us to embrace and to spend t just regular time with and camaraderie like like before. Now he is present in a different way. He will be present in the sacraments now. In the Catholic sacraments he is present. In the breaking of the bread. He's going to be hidden. He's going to be hidden now. And so that is um, true in the Gospel of Luke. And yesterday we heard from the Gospel of John. And in John's Gospel as well, at the Last Supper, Jesus said clearly, um, I will not abandon you. I will come to you, he said. What did he mean by that? Well, the same thing he says to Mary Magdalene. Do not embrace me. Uh, I am not here anymore for to, to walk and live and spend, you know, um, every day and every hour with you anymore. Now I will, I will come to you. When I, after I go to the Father, after I ascend, will send the Holy Spirit, the church will be born, and the sacraments I will come to you in that way. So we recognize him in the breaking of the bread. We recognize him in the scriptures. And we recognize his presence in the sacraments of our church. Let us lift up our hearts now in prayer to God on this Easter day. We pray especially for our Pope Francis and for all the leaders of the church that they will continue to guide the world through these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our political leaders that they will have wisdom also in caring for the needs of the people and keeping them safe from the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are sick and suffering because of the coronavirus and all of the other illnesses that people die from and suffer from, that they will be comforted and that they will be um, blessed and given healing by the risen Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in this Mass, we pray especially for the intention of the Mass for, uh, for Rosita Benabaye. On the occasion of her birthday, we pray for her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear these prayers which we now place upon the altar of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, the bread from heaven who lives forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us the salvation of mind and body. Through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land Every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, pleni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. 
Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand to proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted, now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that, together with Francis our Pope and Myron our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we may praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread.
let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hymns of praise, then let us sing.